Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Thursday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Thursday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. Today I'll be doing part two of the histogram session that we started last Tutoring Tuesday. And I just wanted to say thank you to all the thumbs up. Uh, we do appreciate and welcome any feedback that you guys give us. It lets us know that we're doing a good job and that we are having an impact on you guys. So here I have an image of a frequency density histogram and at first glance it looks very much like the frequency histogram that we initially took a look at. But let's have a closer look. So here I have an image of a frequency histogram, frequency density histogram and its corresponding frequency table. In each case we are still measuring quantitative data that is continuous. However, what you will notice is that in the case of the frequency histograms, while the bars or classes consist of a range of quantitative data values that are equally spaced out, that is not the case for the frequency density histogram. You can see that in the case of the frequency density histogram, the bars are unequally spaced out. Now this is, doesn't always have to be the case. You can have a frequency density histogram which has equally spaced out bars or columns. In both the case of the frequency histogram and the frequency density histogram, adjacent bars are connected without spaces, unlike the bar graph we touched on last session. Another distinction between the frequency histogram and the frequency density histogram is that in the case of the frequency histogram, the height of the bars correspond to frequencies, Whereas in the case of the frequency density histogram, the height of the bars corresponds to the frequency density. And I will touch on that in a little more detail after this last point, which is that the order of the bars cannot be changed. Again, unlike the bar graph that we talked about in the last Tutoring Tuesday session. The idea behind frequency and frequency density becomes clear when we understand how the data has been divided. If we take a look at the frequency histogram, as well as its corresponding frequency table, we can see that the data has been divided into increments of 10. That is, the class width is equal to 10 in each case. In comparison, the range of the bars are no longer equally spaced out. So you can think of this case as a professor or an instructor who is inter no longer interested in looking at how many students achieved grades of 10%, 20%, and 38%. He or she is interested in understanding how many students failed the exam, or how many achieved a C- minus or a C a B or an A. However, the trouble with making such comparisons is that the weight of each letter grade is not the same. If we compare the range for achieving a grade of an F in comparison to achieving a B, for example, you can see that the class widths are quite different. This becomes even more evident when you take a look at the histogram. The respective columns or bins for achieving an F is five times wider than that for achieving a B. In order to compare the frequency of students who got a failing grade to the frequency of students who achieved a B, the frequency for the B grade would have to be multiplied by five because if you multiply the associated bin size by five, both bin sizes or class widths would be the same and therefore comparable. A measure that allows you to make the same comparison is the frequency density because it measures the frequency per percentage unit. Frequency density 
is calculated by dividing the frequency by the class width, which is simply the difference in range. So let's take an example. Let's say the instructor is interested in finding out how many students received a failing grade, so anything in the range of 0 to 50. You would take the frequency, which is 43, and divide it by the class width, which is 50, and is calculated by the difference between 0 and 50, and that would give us our frequency density of 0 0.9. Let's try another example. Let's say the instructor is interested in finding out how many students achieved an A, so anything in the range of 86 to up to 100 percent. You would again take the frequency and divide this by the class width, which is simply the difference in range between 86 and 100, so 100 minus 86 is 14, and once you divide 9 by 14, we find that the frequency density is 0.6. So you would do this for all the different ranges, and then once you've calculated all the different frequency densities, you would be able to construct your frequency density history. Now if we take a look at the frequency table, we are still dealing with the ranges and their respective frequencies. However, unlike the frequency histogram, which measures its frequencies along the y-axis, in the case of the frequency density histogram, the frequency is calculated by the area of a class. So you multiply the frequency density by a class width. So to construct your frequency density histogram, you would simply use your range to divide the intervals of your student grade percentages along the y-axis. So for every range, there's a corresponding and proportional bar. You can see that the range for 0 up to 50 has a wider bar than, for example, a range between 65 and 75 percent. Once you have assigned the appropriate classes or intervals along your y-axis, the height of each bar becomes a measure of your frequency density. So in the case of the range for 0 up to 50, you would create a bar that is 50 percentage points wide and has a height that is equal to the frequency density of 0.9. Going back, we can do the same thing for the range between 86 and 100, where the bar is 14 percentage points wide, and its height corresponds to the frequency of 0.6. Of course, you would do the same thing for all the other ranges, and in the end, the area of the different bars is the frequency of the respective classes. So there you have a comparison between the frequency histogram and a frequency density histogram. Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Thursday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Thursday, happy studying.